Good morning, it's your Pisces MC, Trevor Quincy. Welcome to Astrology Chat and Live. Today is September 25th, 2023, and we're in Libra season. Happy Libra season. Not happy, but happy Libra season. So right now, the focus is on relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection, business, business contracts as well. Now, the sun just ingressed into Libra, so this will be the main focus for the next uh, three to four weeks, per se. Now, Mars is also in this sign, too, so energy and drive around the themes that I've just listed will also be applicable. Just watch out for impulsive or spontaneous tendencies around these themes of relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection, especially around business dealings. Watch your contracts during this time. We are still in the shadow grade or the shadow period of the retrograde for Mercury. Though Mercury is now direct, we are still in a shadow period, so things can be a little wanky. Now, for me personally, the shadow period is kind of when I start seeing things kind of act up, per se. Granted, the communication is better now, but um, things can still go away and uh, technology can and still have its glitches and things like that. So just be aware of that during this time, okay? Moving on, Pluto is in Capricorn right now. It's retrograde. So Pluto's asking us to reevaluate and revisit lessons pertaining to our healing journey and also pertaining to career status, legacy, life's work, our own inner authority as well. Perhaps going through some lessons of hardship to see where we can transform and become our most vulnerable selves, really taking advantage and um, finding acceptance for our light and our shadow attributes as well. Now, Pluto in the United States is actually going through through its second round of the Pluto return. Now, this is the first Pluto return that the United States has ever seen, um, but the Pluto return is actually going to make a full impact at 27 degrees, 33 arc minutes. Right now, Pluto is at 27 degrees, 57 arc minutes, and it is retrograde, so we do have a high possibility of that Pluto crossing back over the arc minute as well as the degree, because it's already at the degree right now. But um, we will have that second hit of the Pluto return, and what to see during the Pluto return. A lot of people getting exposed, a lot of people that may not make that transition into Pluto and Aquarius because Aquarius is very community oriented. It's very much about humanitarianism, progressing society forward, uh, whereas Capricorn's kind of in it just for the self gain, for the recognition, for the success and the status as well. So for people that are not transitioning or evolving into the energy of doing things for the collective, doing things for progressing society forward, they will be left behind and Pluto will find a way to expose that truth, to bring it to the surface so that way everybody knows, okay? So that's kind of the harsh thing of Pluto. But Pluto, since it's a generational planet, juxtaposed a personal planet, and this is happening on a collective scale, see where it's ha um, affecting you in your chart. So wherever Capricorn is, this is where you can transform to become your most authentic and vulnerable self as well, too. Moving on, we do have the moon in Aquarius. Right now is a great time to feel your feelings through rather than to over-intellectualize them or detach yourself from them as well. So be sure that we're feeling them through. Any ideas that you may have towards your future endeavors during this time, be sure that there's an emotional resonation with it. You never know. It could take you further than uh, just a regular old idea that doesn't really have much emotional influence, okay? Moving on, we do have Saturn in Pisces. Neptune's also in Pisces. Both planets are retrograde. It is really important to pay attention to your dreams, any visions that you're having during this time as well. Since Saturn and Pisces is really trying to make your dreams a tangible reality, paying attention to them can actually give you <laughs> that leeway to see what are you going after or what are you going towards. It can give you a sense of direction, okay? And now Saturn is aspecting, um, it's aspecting Leo here. I think that's a quincunx, but um, it's actually a little bit of an opposition since Venus is towards the end of Leo and Saturn's just at the beginning of Pisces. So it could count as an opposition depending on whatever platform that you use. I technically wouldn't consider it to be in opposition because it's more than 10 degrees but you know whatever astro like it really depends on the astrologer per se but i will say since there is an opposition that i'm seeing on this current chart i will say uh your confidence can definitely play a role in um how like your confidence in how you value yourself how you feel um, worthy wise that can play a role in making your dreams a tangible reality actually taking the action but also enjoying life for its fun and recreation as well um having a balance or establishing a balance between the two can actually help to make your dreams a tangible reality, okay? Moving on, we do have Chiron in the North Node in Aries. North Node is bringing faded events to move us towards our destiny, what we are called to do during this specific time. And the North Node will be in Aries for the next 18 months. It has gotten into the North... Um, it's been in Aries for about a month now. Um, so we have about 17 more months of the North Node being in Aries. But this is bringing faded events around self, identity, independence, taking action towards our life's direction, and giving back to ourselves through self-nourishment. Wounds can definitely pop up here, especially if we're feeling 
like we can't be ourselves or we may not have a sense of direction. Perhaps the things that we're going after, people are giving us a hard time about it. As long as we're going after the things that we want to, despite the impulse or the spontaneous action, we should be a-okay, okay? Moving on, we do have Jupiter retrograde. Uranus is also retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Jupiter retrograde usually gives blessings during this time, depending on what you did when Jupiter was direct. So paying attention to wherever Taurus is in your chart. If you have personal placements there, the more the merrier. Uh, now, with Jupiter in Taurus, Jupiter is really asking us to reevaluate any opportunities that have recently come into our endeavor or into our sphere but, um, pertaining to our worth and value, as well as giving back to ourselves through self-nourishment, filling back up our own cup. So if in the case that you may find that you're giving all of your energy, how can you give that energy to yourself or how can you open yourself up to receiving? That way you're not doing everything by yourself. With Uranus here, just be sure that you're not spending more than what is coming in. Also, this can be sudden changes that can really push you into um, establishing your worth and value, okay? Now we also have Venus and Leo, which is giving confidence and um, it's giving confidence around expressing your most authentic self. Also, it's confidence around knowing your worth and value, knowing what it is that you want in relationships, partnerships, and interpersonal connection. This can also pertain to business dealings as well, too. Now, with Venus and Leo, you like having fun with other people. Other people like having fun with you. It's a great time. Just be sure not to have too much fun here because Venus in the fifth house, or Venus does do well in Leo. It is in planetary joy in the fifth house, but sometimes can overindulge. So just watch out for that as well, okay? Last but not least, Mercury is out of the retrograde period, but we are still in a shadow period of Mercury retrograde. It is exalted in Virgo. So I will just say that just be sure that we're paying attention to developing our personal development, um, really paying attention to any routines or schedules that pertain to our day-to-day -day endeavors, physical health as well too. Watch for self-criticism, criticism of others during this time since Mercury does tend to worry more in Virgo, a lot of more racing thoughts, or you tend to overanalyze as well, all right? But well, that's pretty much what we are seeing for the current transits. I do have readings open for today. They're going to be $15. All you have to do is donate them to TRZ Z O L L C cash at Venmo, PayPal, the name is synonymous through all three platforms. Just be sure to include your birth information like date, time, and location like the example that you see up there. For international birthdays, just be sure to format that month, day, year instead of day, month, year. And if you forget to send your information, just send it to my Instagram at Trezo, T-R-E-S-C-Z-O, okay? Now, if you're new to astrology, I do have a book that's out that you guys can read. That way you can learn about the astrology basics. You can even learn how to read your own chart. Look at God. It's called The Beginner's Guide to Life Astrology edition. You can find it in the link in my bio under Trevor Sebastian Publishing. Uh, now, the book is called Beginner's Guide to Life Astrology Edition. The link in my bio is called uh, Trevor Sebastian Publishing. So that book is now available. Also, if you want to book a private reading, actually, let me change this because this is a little dark here. Um, if you want to book a private reading, feel free to do so with me um, through Universal Analysis. That's also in the link in my bio too. I do astrology, numerology, and I also do tarot as well. So if you're interested in a reading, we spend an hour rather than like, you know, five to ten minutes like I'll do on live today. Uh, but we spend an hour going through your chart. We laugh, we cry, we do all the A words. It's a good time. You know, so if you're interested in a private reading, you could definitely book down there. But today our readings are open. But if you have any questions pertaining to astrology, this can just be a Q&A today too. Uh, just be sure to reach out to me or just uh, comment down here. I'm also going to open my poll today because I want to know your rising sign or I really want to know which rising sign is going to win because uh, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces have been winning for the last as they should. Now, I'm not biased. I'm not biased. But, you know... <laughs> All right, so let's see here. How's everyone doing today? How's everyone's morning? Yesterday, it rained here. And, um, I mean, it's okay now, but, like, I am in Texas. And down here, like, this, the grass for the longest time was kind of, like, dry, had, had that dry uh, color to it. It rained once. I've never seen grass go from, like, dry, like, I'm about to break off dry, to, like, oh, now I see... It's, like... It's like my hair, for instance. My hair cannot keep moisture. My hair dries. I can put moisturizer in it. It'll dry as I'm putting it in my hair. Um, but the rain here is kind of similar to that. Like, it won't rain for, like, weeks, months even. Then it rains once, and then the the grass looks greener than it would, say, for instance, in a state that it doesn't rain or it rains a lot. So that's kind of what it's going on right now. It's still cloudy outside because it did rain uh, last night into this morning. But um, at least the sun's out, kind of, sort of, you know. But where's everybody else from? I see a lot of people are joining, but a lot of people may not be talking. Hopefully you guys can hear me, too. Let's see who... 
voted right now. Okay, so we have a tie. Wow, four-way tie. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Aries, Leo, Sag, all 25. All right, Wagwan. Wagwan. I hope I'm not saying anything inappropriate, but, um, you know, let me just keep this up so that way people have any questions. You know, for people that do have questions, let me know. Oh, we got one new message. Columba, Georgia, or Kilumbus, Georgia. Is it because of the clouds? The cumulo, the cumulonimbus clouds or anything like that. But Georgia gets thunderstorms like no other. But here, I will say, in Texas, the rain falls here. Like, it's concerning. Yesterday, it was like lightning. It didn't th it th it thunder a little bit. But, like, down here, they get the Rice Krispie thunderstorms. That's what I call them. Because it's like the... You know, like, you get that in New York, but, like, you don't get it as much. Like, it'll just rain all day in New York. Whereas here, it'll rain for five minutes. The sun will come out. It's like it's you're driving through Florida. Damages. Now, also, yesterday it did hail. It didn't hail where I was, but, like, you go, like, five minutes up the block, it was hailing. And they were like, oh, you know, stay away from any windows because the hail could be the size of a baseball. I'm like, y'all, what? What did y'all do down here? <laughs> Who did something down here to piss off the universe to where you got hail the size of baseball, you know? But then again, that all stems from, like, things back in the day. Oh, what happened here? All right, I got Rika. I got Rika up first. Oop, didn't mean to do that. And then, yeah, readings are still open, everyone. So we're going to start off with Rika, and then we're going to go from there. All right, let's see. I can exit this. But I will say, though, the universe has blessed me with four days of 100 degree weather. And I've never felt more love from the universe than stepping outside in a 100 degree sun. Am I darker? Yes. But was it worth it? Absolutely. I love the warmth. And I think that's one of the reasons why I relocated down here. Because it, I, you can see an 82 degree day on Christmas. You know, and then that next week will be 11. Now, I can't, I don't know what the switch up is with that. But like, I like being down here during the summer, you know, despite other uh, other people because they're used to it because they're probably from here. But like, I like being down here. I think it's a good time. Three days of rain in NYC. Yeah, my um, I was talking to uh, my cousin about that the other day. And there, you know, that one guy who does the NPC in... Um, New York, he's on the corner of, uh, I think it's Prince and something, and he's always doing, like, the Grand Theft Auto. He was doing it in the rain the other day, and I was like, child, if you don't go inside. All right, Rika, let's get to you. What you know about Alexandria, Virginia? What you know about Alexandria? All right, it's 1983, and I need a time. All right, here we go, Rika. What you know? What you know? I got relatives in Alexandria. What you know? What you know down there? Oh, thank you for the gifts. Hey, good morning. How you doing? I caught your live the other day, but it kept coming in and out. So um, I didn't get to see much of it, but I hope you're doing okay. Um, by the way, I love the way that you read. I meant I was going to put that on the live, but it kept glitching. But I do like the way that you do read though. I'm still learning. Oh, you do you do excellent. You do just fine. By the way, everybody, you go you guys go follow Spiritual Mirakai. Um, I found her, well, we found each other, I would say, on Clubhouse years ago. Um, oh, I mean learning TikTok. TikTok is a little different. It's more different than Clubhouse, I'll tell you that. You know, um, Back in the day on Clubhouse, I feel like it was much easier to find people. Whereas now, I mean, you could find people, but the algorithm is so different to like um, try to like maneuver. Let's see here. All right. So here's how I do my readings, everybody. So uh, before I get to your nice chart up here, I'm going to go down here and check a look, take a look to see if you have any critical degrees. Now, what are critical degrees? Critical degrees are degrees of significant importance. They can bring in some faded events, people, places, things, the nouns, really. So if in the case that you have any critical degrees, pay attention to the sign and the house. I'm going to go through each placement. So I'll let you know if you have any critical degrees, but pay attention to the sign and the house because any transit there can bring in a new relationship, can bring 
bring in a new lesson, could bring in a new blessing. You never know. It's a fun time. All right, here we go. Um, for you, Rika, Sun 9, Taurus, Sun is at a critical degree, Moon 21, Sagittarius, Mercury 25, Taurus, Venus 20, Gemini, Mars 18, Taurus, Jupiter 9, Sagittarius, retrograde, Saturn 0, Scorpio, retrograde, Saturn's at a critical degree, Uranus 8, Sagittarius, retrograde, Neptune 29, Sagittarius, retrograde, Neptune's at a critical degree, Pluto 27, Libra, retrograde, North Node 27, Gemini, retrograde, Chiron 26, Taurus, Ascendant 22, Leo, Ascendant's at a critical degree, MC 16, Taurus, okay? Uh, give me one second. I'm just going to turn on my fan because it's a little hot in here. Took my whole phone with me. Give me one second. I was so happy that I found you too. Love your style. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was so happy that you came across my, uh, that I came across your FYP page. Um, but I, as I said, I was following you on Instagram and I was seeing your posts on Instagram prior to but I'm happy that I found you on TikTok because I'm more active on TikTok than I am on Instagram or any other place. Is the ninth degree a critical degree for all signs? No. The ninth degree is a critical degree for the fixed signs. So Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius. They won't let me post astrology on IG. So bye IG. Wait, what? Why? What happened? Is it just like the algorithm will take it down or they'll cancel it? I haven't really gotten into IG astrology, so I wouldn't really know. Too many predictions, T. All right, let's see here. Leo Ascendant, part of your ascension requires you to put yourself out there to build up your confidence, to express your most authentic self, as well as have fun and enjoy life or its recreation as well. Love, romance, and children will also have an influence here too. Now, there could be a little bit of conflict and inner tension in regards to career status, legacy, and life's work. Just be sure to take your time. Also, be sure that you are expressing your authentic self here because your chart ruler is in that 10th house there, okay? So major focus is going to be on career status, legacy, life's work, as well as your inner authority. You need to develop patience here, okay? Because whatever it is that you are building for your life, it is going to be around for a long time, but it is going to require patience on your part. It's not going to be an overnight process, but you're not going to, you're not meant to do it alone. Other people will definitely help you out. They'll give you resources to grow within your career status, legacy, and life's work. Just open yourself to receptivity. With Mars here, there is that streak of independence within career. Just be sure that we're not too impulsive or spontaneous with any action especially with career dealings because this can definitely cause challenges hardships obstacles we wouldn't want that okay but i will say for um, mars and taurus you do like you do naturally know how to take your time but when you get upset you can get upset for a while so just be sure that we are facing that head on and we're not holding on to anything that does not need to be held on to okay mercury and chiron here your wounds pertaining to career um or just pertaining to success in general this could have had an impact on your worth and value perhaps people tried to shut down your success maybe they they didn't give you any support when you did accomplish something or perhaps when you were sharing your goals with them they tried to shut you down saying that it's hard for people to gain success in this field or whatever or it'll be hard for you to do it you know they they kind of discourage you in a sense go after what it is that you feel that you are worthy to receive okay because you are deserving you are worthy okay but whatever it is that you're going after just develop patience it'll help you to heal yourself and to heal other people as well utilize your ideas also speak up for yourself you can best do this within your career status legacy and life's work and i don't even have to worry about you uh thinking before speaking because Tor uh, mercury and taurus likes to take its time when communicating but your ideas can best be utilized within that career status legacy and life's work okay moving on we have nothing in virgo we have pluto and we have oh, no just pluto in libra so pluto in the third house very powerful thoughts here very powerful way of communicating to other people here but people have to be ready so it's kind of you need to know your audience in a sense but not so much like sagittarius to where they're just going to say anything Thing. And they're just going to be like, oh, the people that are here for me, they're here for me. And the other people that aren't, you know, whatever. Uh, with Pluto in the third, you're showing up as your most authentic self and you speak truth in all that you are sharing to, with other people. Watch for spreading gossip and misinformation. This can actually be quite karmic for you. But I will say with Pluto here, be sure to prioritize your healing journey. Okay, really going after the darker aspects of life, accepting them and really accepting your past as well, too. Now, with Pluto in the third house also or Pluto in Libra, this does deal with other people, relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection. Great for business. A lot of good business ideas that could be quite powerful for you, training that North Node. So be sure to write those ideas down when they do come about. 
But when you're sharing information with other people, watch for other people projecting onto you. Don't take that on, okay? Because that just means that if other people are projecting onto you, you're stepping in your authenticity. You're doing something right here, okay? Moving on, we do have Saturn and Scorpio at that critical degree in the fourth house. This could represent harsh relationships with the mother figure or perhaps just with family altogether. You may have felt like you didn't get the emotional nourishment that you um, wanted or craved early in childhood as well. This could have caused you to really face your own emotional well-being without the development there. Be sure that you're spending time to feel everything through, feeling out your feelings and your emotions, really listening to your intuition. That's going to be important, but also learning yourself at a foundational level. You're very, very, very powerful here, but it is really important not to over-obsess over your emotional well-being, really prioritizing your healing journey, as I said, with that Pluto in the third house too, will definitely help you to step into your power as long as you don't over-obsess over that too, okay? Moving on, we do have Uranus, Jupiter, Moon, and we have Neptune in Sagittarius. Now, we do have a poverty in uh, the fifth house here. With Jupiter here, it's really, uh, Jupiter's a significator of the fifth house, really great if you want to have children, really great for expressing yourself, watch for the over-ego, watch for over uh, overconfidence, because this can actually uh, hinder or cause stagnation, okay? But Jupiter in Sagittarius usually is very experienced, very wise, but you need to know your audience here. It's because sometimes you can fall into the preachy-teachy, I just spit, the lecture Larry energy too. Uh, so just watch out for that. But for the most part with Uranus here, you like to have fun in a different way. You like to build your confidence in a different way as well too. Um, I will say pay attention to when you are having fun. Some ideas can actually come through to help you execute any future endeavors, or it can even help you to find a new way to tap into your belief system, philosophy, or even your life's purpose too. This is going to come through an opportunity, so there's not much work that you have to do here. But um, emotional fulfillment can definitely come through building up your confidence, having fun, enjoying life too. But this confidence is going to be needed to execute any future endeavors that you have as well, okay? So it is really important that you are developing that confidence because not only is it going to give you confidence, but it's also going to cater towards your uh, emotional well-being too. With Neptune here, just be sure that we're having fun in a more realistic sense, not just imagine what it's like to put ourselves out there or to have fun and enjoy life's recreation as well too. Also, this can pertain to uh, your spiritual beliefs or perhaps uh, any philosophies that you may um, have as well. Be sure that we're going after or finding beliefs in a more realistic sense rather than just believing something to be true or just hearing something and just going with it. Make sure that we have the facts behind that as well too, okay? Nothing in Capricorn, nothing in Aquarius, nothing in Pisces, nothing in Aries. Already went over Taurus, so last but not least, we are up to Gemini. We have Venus and Gemini North Node here, Faded events around friends, groups, networks, organizations, the execution of your future endeavor as well. Now with Venus here, you're not meant to do it alone. This process is going to include other people. They're going to give you resources. They're going to help you to manifest your um, uh, future endeavors here. You're not meant to do this alone. You have the resources there, but there can be sometimes the... Um, there can be this wanting of stimulation. Be sure to stimulate yourself, but not to, to become too codependent on things that are external, okay? Thank you for the roses. Now, with North Node in Gemini, you could be the jack of all trades, master of none, but you'll always do it better than the master of one. With North Node in Gemini, you're meant to do multiple things, so put your eggs in multiple baskets. You don't just have to do one thing. This can even mean to execute any future endeavors that you have for yourself. Just be sure here that you're just taking your time with what it is that you are doing, taking your time with the process, okay? But that's where you're gonna, um, that's what's gonna help you to step into your power if you listen to your ideas and put some execution behind them, all right? But that's pretty much all I'm seeing for your chart for the most part. Very favorable energy working for you here. A lot of gains coming in for you as well, too, all right? Thank you. All right, so that's pretty much how the readings go. I'm just going to catch up on the comments. All oh, right, too many predictions. I've been too right because you know I do predictive astrology anyways. Right, right, right. So I'm on the cusp of Sag and Cap. I was born at 336 December 21st. Does that make me a Sag or a Cap? Well, we're about to find out. Uh, well, what year were you born? Because that will also help. Right. Raven said it depends on where you were born. It depends on where... No, it depends on um, the year that you were born. Not so much where you were born, but the year that you were born and when you were born, too. But we have the time. I just need the, um, the year. All right. So we're about to see here. Um, I'm not doing your chart, by the way, but um, I'm just going to see if you are a Sagittarius or Capricorn. Um, cause I actually, it's funny that you, uh, that we're doing this. You just read a guru's chart. Um, I don't believe, I, maybe, I don't know. Rika, are you a guru? And if so, why didn't you let me know? <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. I need December 21st, 1996. 
um, and Michigan, you said, right? Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to put Detroit because Michigan is still okay. So we're going to see here. I should have ran a thing. You're a Capricorn. Capricorn, technically you're a Sagittarius and Sidereal, but you're a Capricorn, zero degrees. Welcome to the Capricorn energy. Oh, thank you for the dog. Look at that dog. Thank you. Capricorn gang gang. You uh, Do you still do Vedic too? I do. I do Vedic. I do sidereal, regular sidereal, and I do tropical as well. I also do draconic. I'm trying to get into Hellenistic. I'm, I really am, but it's, it's a totally different world. You know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Uh, ooh. Oh, okay. I didn't feel like a cap as a teen, but now that I'm a mom, definitely feel more like it. Well, and you're turning to critical degree, so you may, it's still in the pure energy. There's still so much. Uh, now I gotta be nosy again because, like, <laughs> I need to see where your Saturn's at. Like, not me about to give you a whole reading, but I'm about to because I, I need to know. I, I need to know. Let's see. LC. I'm a Hellenistic astrologer. I have questions then. Um, cause uh zero degrees Taurus, Ivy Underwood, the other day, I watched her video that it said that the North and the South node are actually very opposite than what um traditional or modern astrology dictate them as. So for instance, if in the case that your north node is what you're moving towards, she says it as that's actually a place of excess in your life, whereas the south node is a place of um neglect. You're not really going after your south node. I'm like, for me, I don't feel that because my south node is in Pisces. It's conjunct my MC. And I feel like I've been in that energy a whole lot more than I've been in my north node energy because my north node is in the third house and it's conjunct my IC. I mean, granted, if you call this isolation period my north node, then maybe. But like, <laughs> I feel like I've been more in my south node energy. Um, let's see here. But what was I saying? You You said that you felt more like uh, Sagittarius in your teens, but we're, we're going to figure this out. Why could that be? Well, you have Saturn and Aries. All right. Um, uh, Saturn and Aries. Where's Aries on your chart? Maybe the 11th house. Yeah, I don't know. I really thought I was going to figure that out there. You could have felt more like a Sagittarius because it's your descendant and you're ascending more towards Gemini. Um, and so the thing is, and what I'm learning about astrology too uh, your descendant is actually what you're going to show to people, but it's actually the energy that can get you into people pleasing. So you may feel more like a Sagittarius, especially early on in life, especially the more um, connections that you have with people. Your Venus is conjunct the descendant, so you will naturally attract more people, which could be a reason as to why you felt more like a Sagittarius. But as time progresses, you're moving more towards that Gemini energy because you're ascending more towards that with the more you get to learn yourself and you're getting out of the Sagittarius energy. There there was an astrologer that said that your descendant is actually the past life energy that you're getting out of and you're going into your uh, this lifetime with your ascendant. But that's just my two cents that I'm adding in. But yes, I had to look up your whole chart again just to see how Saturn was expressing itself. Also, I have Saturn in Aries too. Also, what's her Jupiter? I just had it. Now I got to go back and see it again. Um, and I did not remember either. Sorry, Elsie. We're using your chart. We're just debunking a lot. I hope I have your permission to do this. Um, but we're just seeing what's going on up here. Okay, so Elsie's Jupiter is... Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, you. Jupiter's in Capricorn in the 8th house. How is that manifesting for you? Because I have Jupiter in the 8th house in Capricorn in my sidereal. Child, it's a show, you know, but <laughs> let's see here. I find looking at the planetary ruler of the sun can help us see... Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah, Jupiter's in Cap, Sun's in Cap as well. Um, but I would say the only reason why I think that you felt like a teen was probably because that Sagittarius descendant. All right, let's see here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. The houses would be equal. Hmm. He's doing. He's not doing whole sign. Uh, well, I read whole sign by memory. I'm just, it's just showing as Placidus. Usually when I do a chart analysis, I just naturally do it in whole sign. I just don't adjust it because... I just don't. All right. Uh, let me put up. Yeah, I'll keep it here. Why not? The head of the dragon is the north node. Yes. So the head of the dragon is the north node. And I knew that. But like, um, 
I don't know if you're familiar with Zero Degrees Taurus on TikTok. Her name is Ivy Underwood. I watched her video and she was saying that like, we should focus on the South Node because it's the place, it's the area of our life that we neglect. Now, I'm like, I... I agree with her, but then I don't because like, then as I said, my North Node, my South Node is in the ninth house, but it's in the 10th house in Placidus and career and my belief, I feel like that has been at the forefront of my whole career, what I do. And I feel like I've been more focused on that, especially the older I get, because I know that you're naturally moving towards your MC as you get older. But like, I feel like even as a child, I was more in my Piscean energy because I have a Pisces South Node. I, I was in that energy more so than my Virgo I see. Although, like, I went to school, I was on a routine every day. But, like, now, now, you know, <laughs> now I find that it's, like, keeping the order in my life is a little different. But I have the vision of what it is that I'd like to do. But, child, sometimes I just get bored, you know? <sighs> The house system is so confusing to me because there are different house systems uh, to use. Like, usually I just read whole sign because it's how the planets will manifest juxtapose placidus, which is great for psychological analysis. It's also great for why we do the things that we do as well. Gotcha. Because you referred to Rika's Jupiter in the fifth, even though it was in the fourth placidus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, when I'm doing, like, the quick analysis here, I usually do just whole sign. Um, but if I, if you want placidus, like, just say that I would, would rather have placidus. Because that's more, as I said, the psychological reasoning behind your chart. It also helps us to understand different people, too. And the decisions that they make. I feel we jump into our North Node at 30. That's what I did after my return. I, I'm looking forward to it because I'm, I'm hearing a lot about my solar returns going to be great. Now, let me ask you astrologers a question because I heard a while back and I forgot where I heard it from. If in the case that your nodal return at 18 wasn't the greatest, that your solar return tends to be better. I want to know people's opinion on that because I heard that and my nodal return was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was. So I'm like, and I haven't gone through myself on my Saturn return yet. I have a couple more years with that, but I do want to know like for people that did go through their nodal return or can at least remember what it was like, was their Saturn return better? Was it worse? <coughs> Let's see here. Um, what house is in Virgo? For me or for um, for who? Because my, my Virgo is in the third house. Conjunct my IC. I'm a Pisces stellium. Oh, Pisces, Venus, Uranus, and a lot of fortune. All conjunct. Um, and does, do anybody, does anybody utilize your, um, lot of fortune, part of fortune? Cause I know it's usually, it does beneficial for health and body matters. I haven't really tapped into that all that much. Cause mine's in the first house in cancer, but I haven't really like intentionally tapped into it to see what it was going to do. But if anybody else has experience, let me know. I think South Node needs to be realized or released. I think, um, yeah, that's usually what, um, that's what modern astrology says, that the South Node is qualities that we need to release, but it's natural gifts that we can implement into moving towards our North Node. But I remember Ivy had said that, like, our South Node is actually the place that we neglect, that we need to really focus on that more than the North Node, because it's a place of excess. Because the nodes are really representative of the lessons in life. Saturn represents the South Node uh, because it's more the restrictive energy. It's the energy that we've already mastered, whereas Jupiter is the North Node energies because you're going to, it's faded events. So these are things that are going to come effortless. There's not much energy that we need to put in to move towards our North Node. As for what she, as for what was said, our nodal, our, our nodal reversal is gnarly. Um, my nodal reversal, like my half lunar node or my um, nodal return, my half Nodal return. Um, oh, wait, no, never mind. I haven't gone through it yet. I'm about to go through it. Not now, not when North Node is in Aries, but when North Node goes into Pisces, I'll be going through my half nodal return. So I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated, but we have about like 18 months before that happens. Mine was terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. All right, waiting for my Jupiter return. Mine happened two years ago and I'm ready. For, I'm going to be waiting 10 years again. So at 18, yeah, my North Node Pisces, I started partying crazy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. See, I'd, ra I'd rather have the North Node Pisces. It sounds like a better time because North Node and Virgo, it, it just sounds like a trip and it's boring sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes it's fun, but sometimes I'm just like, Bleh. isn't that just Jupiter? What? Uh, the North Node energy? Or just faded events that are going to happen 
um, natally. Now, Jupiter's all about expansion, so it brings you opportunities to get you to understand whatever area of life that Jupiter is in, and it's going to bring that effortlessly. But Jupiter is not so much fated events. Jupiter kind of asks you, if you want to gain wisdom on that specific area of life, we can give you opportunities, but you may have to align yourself. But there are certain karmas that Jupiter is going to pay out anyway. Like if it if your soul signed up to expand on whatever, Jupiter is going to give you that. But the North Node energy is fated events regardless. There's not and there's not much energy that you have to put into that. Whereas with Jupiter, if it's retrograde, you have to put energy into that. When it's natal, I mean, granted, Jupiter just expands whatever it touches um, effortlessly, but there's still effort with Jupiter, especially if you want to manifest intentional opportunities. Jupiter, you I would put work in Jupiter, whereas the North Node, that's going to happen. Doesn't matter what work you put in, you know? All right. Yeah, I didn't enjoy mine. The South Node is supposed to be a decrease and the North Node is like an increase. I think it is. Um, yeah, that's and that's what I've been hearing too. That Like the the South Node is the things that you have to move away from. The North Node is what you're supposed to move towards. Uh, my Saturn return was a hot mess because I wasn't adulting. Saturn and Scorpio. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. No, no. Saturn and Scorpio. I don't blame you. Saturn and Scorpio, for those that do have that natally and then you had your return, it, it's a mess regardless. I remember Saturn and Scorpio affected me. I don't have Saturn and Scorpio, but... Um, during that time, the sun and Mercury and Chiron in Scorpio. So when Saturn was transiting Scorpio, it was not a pretty time in life, you know, but Saturn in Scorpio is that type of placement that it doesn't just affect you. It affects other people too. So you got to be cautious of the energy. My Saturn, oh, I read that part of fortune. Oh, part of fortune. Gotcha. Yeah. But part of fortune, I'm like, I don't necessarily... You know, I, I don't necessarily go into because a lot of people I've seen a lot of like TikTokers saying, oh, manifest with the part of fortune, you know, tap into this energy and your business is going to expand. And I'm like, no, like <laughs> you're that's it's meant for health and body matters, especially in zodiacal releasing. So if we're paying attention to that and we're manifesting, trying to get our business, then like, and if it works for you, if it works for you. But like usually it means health and body matters. So I don't understand why people are making it different. Uh, let's see the north. My north node was in Sag, right? Uh, let's see. <laughs> no, your North Node is in either Libra or Scorpio. No, it's more so on the Libra side if you're 96. Um, because I'm 97 and my North Node's in Virgo. So I would say that it's Libra. All right, let me keep this up. So for those that would like a rating. All right, let's see what's going on here. Are you still doing meeting? Oh, mini readings through Venmo. Yes, I'm still doing mini readings through Venmo. They're still open. So if you want one, just donate $15 to TRZO LLC, Cash at Venmo, PayPal. The name is anonymous through all three platforms. Just be sure to include your birth information, like time, date, location, like the example that you see right here. And for international birthdays, just format that month, day, year, instead of day, month, year. And if you forget to send it on Instagram, well, <laughs> you can just send it on uh, Trezzo, T R E S C Z O. All right, but I don't know which house to use since I know Placid is a psychological, but a North Node is like Destiny. You could use whatever. I predominantly use Whole Sign, but if you want, I can read Placidus as well. Hey, Laura, how you doing? Okay, heading towards my nodal return, surrounding myself around like-minded people. That's kind of where I'm at on my journey too. Now, let me ask for my Pisces individuals here. Do you feel that the more you progress on your spiritual journey, the more that you kind of like, eh, no, it's a two-way street. Because for me, I find that like I still do attract people that like they're teaching me lessons per se but i am now starting to notice i'm attracting some of my 12th house energy because capricorn and gemini gemini sits in my 12th house and capricorn sits in my seventh and i tend to attract both of them yeah um the lot of fortune is supposed to be oh i'm trying to read these like the wheel of fortune it does relate to health and body gotcha what is the website that you're using? I like astrocharts.com because I like the way that they outline it. So astro-charts.com. I cannot understand because I was like, it isn't the part of fourth and just Jupiter. Nah, it, it can give you results like Jupiter depending on the sign that it's in because different signs give you different manifestations. Manifesting with part of fortune could work if it's placed in the fifth or the 11th house maybe, but I don't know. If you want like material blessings from the part of fortune, it would need to be in the second house. Fifth or the 11th, it's actually great for fortune as well as the ninth house too. But I'm like, it really depends on the house that it's in because people think, oh, my 
find fortunes in the third house, I'm going to become rich. It could possibly work because uh, the third house is the higher up of the second house. It's second from the second, but it's not guaranteed. You know what I mean? Manifesting with, oh, I already read that. The wheel of fortune doesn't always mean good. It couldn't depend on the house and the planets. Right, 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 right. All right, I'm good. How you doing? I'm breathing. It's nice today. It's sunny. It's cloudy though too. It rained yesterday. Um, and it was not my first thunderstorm here, but like it was a pivotal one. I made it through. I sent it. Omega, I got you. We're going to do yours in just a few. I'm just reading. You sure do. I'm a Gemini rising. I know that's right. I'm a Gemini. I'm a, I'm a Scorpio sun, Libra moon, and Cancer rising in tropical. I attract a lot of Geminis, Aries, and Scorpios. I love them. All but the Gemini men, not too much. See, I don't mind, like, hmm, I dated one Gemini sir, and that was it for me. I, I don't think I could do that again. Um, with Gemini women, I do much better with. Like, I, I have more friendships with Gemini women than I do with Gemini men. But my roommate has a Gemini moon and a Saturn in Gemini, and we get along quite well. I think it's a good time. But he also has a Capricorn ascendant, and I tend to get along with Capricorn ascendants effortlessly. Y'all, yeah. let's see. Mine is in the second house at 28 degrees. Yep, you're going to win some money. Just kidding. Geminis are great for friendship. Yes, yes, yes. But relationship-wise, ooh, ooh, go ahead. Spill the tea. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. And I'm a triple. I've been learning about Aphrodite asteroid. Ooh, let me know about that. Because I've tried to, I've really tried to get into the asteroids, but I'm like, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Your roommate has the same ascendant and Saturn as me. Per Alara, are you my are you my roommate? Is that, are you trying to tell me something? Are you my roommate? Do we go out on the weekends? <laughs> All right, Omega, let's get to your reading. Oh, we got a native New Yorker. Uh, oh, come on, Manhattan. I've heard it's been rainy there. I'm a native New Yorker. Maybe I am. <gasps> You mean to tell me you came to Texas? <laughs> let's see here. 650. All right, let's get to our next reading. When my money coming, Pisces rising. All right, let's see here. We got a Libra ascendant. And we're going to go down here to see if you have any critical degrees. All right, wow, your sun setting right on top of my moon, degree and all. Sun 21, Libra, moon 18, Virgo, Mercury 20, Libra, retrograde, Venus 28, Virgo, Mars 21, Capricorn, Jupiter 15, Cancer, Saturn 14, Gemini, retrograde, Uranus 21, Aquarius, retrograde, Uranus. Is that a critical degree? Neptune 5, Aquarius, retrograde, Pluto 13, Sagittarius, North Node 0, Cancer, retrograde, North Node's at a critical degree. Chiron 24, Sagittarius, Ascendant 17, Libra, MC 19, Cancer. All right, let's get into it, yes. Libra, Ascendant, part of your ascension requires you to focus on relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection, business, business, contracts as well. Marriage and union sold separately. Marriage may vary. Results may vary. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, just watch out for people pleasing or uh, putting other people before yourself. There's a tendency to do that. It was just how you raised, okay? You do have a lot of ideas that you can utilize within career status, legacy, and life's work. All right? This is where you shine. You have a lot of confidence, too, that you can utilize within that career status, legacy, and life's work. But perhaps um, the emotion may not be there, okay? Because there's a square between your identity and who you are and what your direction for what you want to do and career status, legacy, and life's work. Just just be sure that whatever action you're taking towards your career, that it resonates with your emotional well-being. 1010 is on the clock as we speak, if you can see right there. All right. So just be sure that we are um, doing things that are uh, resonate, resonating with our emotional well-being. That will actually alleviate that inner conflict and tension that you may be feeling here. But your ascendant, your Mercury, and your sun is at the apex of a major T-square. So this means tapping into relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection, business, business contracts, what your ascension is asking you to do, is actually going to help you to alleviate yourself from inner conflict conflict and tension, okay? Because there could be the tendency, with Libra Ascendant, there could be the tendency to uh, be independent that way, and that's your just descendant. Just be sure that we are um, inviting other people in and not just doing everything on our own, okay? Moving on. 
one, your chart ruler, um, is in the 12th house. So a lot of unconscious qualities that we need to unpack here. Could be a spiritual journey that you're on too. Just be sure that we are discerning what energy is right for you, okay? Because you can definitely attract in some karmic relationships, people that don't have your best intention at heart. All right, so watch out for that. But usually when you're feeling great, when you're feeling happy, when you're not worried, that's when things are going good for you, okay? Also be sure not to over-intellectualize your emotions, but rather feel them through. Also watch out for the self-criticism, criticism of others. I see you here, all right? Over analysis, the worrying energy can also come through in hidden enemies. So just watch out for that as well, okay? But for the most part, spending time by yourself will help you to see the unconscious qualities that are within you. That way, you don't have to find out through karmic relationships, okay? Moving on, we have nothing in Scorpio. We have Pluto and Sagittarius and Chiron and Sagittarius all in the third house. What's up with this Pluto in the third house? I've been seeing a pattern today, okay? Pluto in the third, very powerful speaker, very powerful thoughts, very powerful opinions. But you need to be, the people that you're sharing this information, information with, they need to be ready for what you're saying, okay? They need to be on this healed journey because you speak the truth in all that you do and other people may project onto that. You serve as the catalyst that can help other people to heal or to project. And nine out of 10 times, they may project, so don't take on that, all right? But you may have uh, taken on this energy before and that's caused you to kind of like hold back your um, opinions and thoughts. It could have hold you, held you back from speaking up for yourself. Do find an outlet to speak up for yourself or just share it in front of those people and just don't care, you know? But journaling, speaking to the universe, writing the letter that has never been delivered, those are options that can help you to get your words out there, okay? But once you do that, that'll actually help you to heal yourself and to heal other people, and it can even give you some emotional fulfillment. I think it's a good time, you know? But I will say here, backing up any information that you're sharing with other people with experience, with your own personal experience, will definitely help you here to establish the balance. But watch for spreading misinformation, watch for spreading gossip. This can be quite karmic for you, and it can be transformative, and we don't want that show, do we? Now... All right, moving on. We have Mars in Capricorn, conjunct that I see here. There could have been inner conflicts and tension within the home or in early childhood here. Perhaps you've had to grow up early here. Watch out for impulse energy when dealing with your emotions. You need to face your emotions head on because this can lead to violent outbursts, lashing out if not careful here. Venus is in its fall too. Make sure that you don't let your love life affect self-worth as per what Danny has said as well. Good observation. Good on you. Good on you. All right. Now with Mars in Capricorn, it is an exalted energy. You definitely do know how to take your time to build something for yourself within career status, I can see in life's work. Now, there is the opposition or here. So just be sure that you're balancing your personal life with your public life in career status, I can see in life's work. As I said, just be sure not to rush through any career dealings as well. Uh, did I say everything I wanted to say? I did. All right, moving on. We do have Neptune. We have Uranus here in the fifth house here. Very different way of how to build up your confidence and put yourself out there to express your most authentic self. There may be a false illusion here early on in life. But just be sure that we are finding whatever way that we can to express ourselves. Rather, it's just enjoying life or it's fun and recreation or, you know, going on dates, whatever works for you. Uh, also paying attention uh, to when uh, you're having fun or when you're confident, paying attention to the ideas that can come through too, because that can also have an impact on your career status, I can see in life's work, as well as helping you to better understand yourself too. Look at God. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Venus has a mutual rulership. Yes, it does. It does. It is in a mutual relationship, so it is going to get better. Also, your spiritual journey has a big tie into your identity and who you are, too. So it is going to play a big role in your life and in your ascension as well, since it is your chart ruler, too. Moving on. Nothing in Pisces, nothing in Aries, nothing in Taurus. Saturn and Gemini here. As I said before, watch for spreading misinformation or gossip. This could be quite karmic and transformative with Pluto's affluence on this as well. But with Saturn in the ninth house, there may be struggles to find a belief system, a philosophy, a religion, a way of life, your own truth. Just be sure here that you're taking your time and putting consistency behind your belief system or philosophy. That way you are kind of keeping up with it or it's going to help you to expand here too. But Saturn in the ninth house or anytime when Saturn is with Jupiter, it's kind of the balance between constriction and expansion. So it's like anytime that you're feeling like you're about to expand or you're about to kind of like uh, learn something new, there's always kind of a challenge there. Spiritually, you may not like to listen to other people, but I will say here, stay curious in regards to spirituality, higher education, your own beliefs as well, because you may learn something new, okay? Uh, moving on, we do have North Node Jupiter and MC in Cancer. As I said before, whatever you're doing towards your career just needs to resonate with your emotional well-being. Otherwise, it gets the chat. All right. Right? That, but we have North Node in Cancer, so prioritizing your feelings and your emotions, prioritizing your more nurturing side, as well as learning yourself at a foundational level. Learn, listen to your intuition. Listening to your intuition is going to be very important here, okay? Especially
especially within your career because it could lead you toward it could lead you towards growth. Now, with Jupiter being conjunct the MC, you're naturally going to attract a lot of opportunities that can help you to grow and excel within your career status, legacy, and life's work. Definitely may live that larger than life persona too. But with Jupiter um, conjunct the MC, I'm spinning today, so excuse me. But um, with Jupiter conjunct the MC, I will say here that over time you may feel as though that your career may not resonate with your spiritual self because the more that you learn on your journey, uh, the more you're going to expand upon. Um, and if it's not resonating with you on a spiritual level, uh, there may be some hindrances, which is why I say make sure that uh, your career resonates with you on an emotional level. That way, when you're getting opportunities here, you're going to pick the ones that are right for you. Okay? I love this chat. Thanks. But I have to dash. I'll definitely be back. I look forward to you coming back. All right. Let's see here. Last but not least, before I let you go, Moon and Virgo here. I, already, I think I already talked about that, but I'll talk about it again. With Moon and Virgo, emotional fulfillment can also come through your daily operations, day-to-day -day events, work schedule, routine around personal development and physical health. So just be sure here with Virgo in the 12th uh, that we are um, finding a balance between implementing our spiritual journey within our day-to-day -day as well too. Now with Venus in the 12th house, make sure that we are not approaching the 12th house energy from a materialistic lens. This can cause damage to not only your spiritual journey, but all also to your identity independence. You may feel a little bit directionless as well. So make sure that we're not um, going after our spiritual journey from a materialistic standpoint, all right? But that's all I'm seeing for your chart for the most part. Thank you. Oh, I did not mean to do that. All right, let's see here. Rashad, I have you up next. Uh, but we're going to take a moment because I just want to read the... Um, of course, Omega, anytime. But I just want to read the comments that I missed. Moon and Venus and Virgo, how's your love life? Oh, Tay. Um, I, I was in your lives before you moved there, though. I know. I know. I know. So what do you... Uh, wait, hold on. So maybe you are the roommate. <gasps> oh, the sun went away. It's now cloudy outside. It looks like it's about to rain again. I don't like when it rains here because then I feel like my energy just shifts. Whereas when I was in New York and it was cloudy, I, I felt like it was more like bubbly and like, oh my God, it's cloudy. <laughs> But now it's just like, oh, it's cloudy. <laughs> Ow, Gen Z. Mercury in the first at my Venmo. Got that. Isolates. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Can you tell me? Lance, how you doing? I was on your live earlier today, but it didn't see. I don't know if you were there. Uh, like you were there, but I don't know if you were like there. You know what I mean? Can you tell me a little bit about Jupiter and Sagittarius um, retrograde in the sixth house? Yeah, so Jupiter and Sagittarius natally comes with an energy of experience, wisdom. You're going to gain a lot, especially within your day to day. But since it's retrograde, introspection is going to be needed because you already have this um, wisdom within you. These are things that you learn from early in life, past life as well. With it being in the sixth house, this could make a busy bee. It could make you very um, ambitious towards um, accomplishing any goals within the day to day. Now, I will say that you may find a belief system or a uh, philosophy that serves you for your day-to-day -day, or it's recommended for you to find something within your day-to-day -to -day that can help you toward move towards your life's purpose as well too um, and do it through introspection you may be able to figure this out for you uh, but yeah how you doing Lance long time no chat well, if he's a crybaby, then it could be me. Yeah, no, he's not a crybaby. He has Saturn conjunct moon, um, and they're in Gemini. So I don't, I've don't. i never seen one tear leave this man's face. <laughs> and I don't think I will. I don't, I don't, well, he's not really much of a public display of affection type of person. At least he doesn't give that off to me. But like, yeah, no, I've not seen one tear leave this man's eye yet. <laughs> T, let's see here. Okay, Rashad, we're up to you. Hi, miss you, darling. It's been a minute. It has. Um, I don't know if you heard me before. I was on your live. I, I think it was this morning. Um, but I think you were there, but like you weren't there. Like when I joined in, it was silent. But like last night we had thunderstorms. So I'm like, my, um, my Wi-Fi has been in and out. Um, Rashad, I need a couple of uh, information from you. Um, if you haven't sent it to my Instagram. Let's see here. Okay, I have Obi. Okay, never mind. I got Rashad. Let's see. New Orleans. In the Southland, there's a city way down on the river. They got music. It's always playing. Start in the daytime, go on through the night. And when you hear that music playing, hear what I'm saying, make you feel all right. That's right. What y'all know about Princess and the Frog? Nothing. I'm just kidding. Let me stop. 
You have a beautiful voice. Well, thank you. Speaking of that, I released a song today. It's called Charge My Phone. Make sure you're charging your phones, everybody. And while you're charging your phone, you can go over to my profile and listen to the song. I think it's a good bop, you know? Um, it's called Charge My Phone. It's available on all music streaming platform services and for your entertainment. Uh, the link is in my bio, if you'd like. What the? What the? <laughs> <laughs> guys while i'm on live i got somebody just messaged me on instagram asking me if i need a daddy to spoil him <laughs> ah, I'm screaming. i could read this out loud okay um it, it's really giving spam or scam but i'm gonna take a look at this man's profile first um it says you yeah, know <laughs> oh god oh god oh god um <laughs> Not say yes. <laughs> Not Dizzy making her a frog the whole movie. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know what? She definitely could have, you know, been herself. And the prince could have been the frog the whole time. All right. Let's see here. But yeah, he said, hello, beautiful. Do you need a daddy to spoil and support you financially? You're really gorgeous and adorable. You deserve to be happy and treated like a queen. No sex or nudes attached. You know, Disney giving racist. No, please. <laughs> Not that. All right. Let's see here, Rashad. Sorry for keeping you waiting. All right. Sun 2 Sagittarius, Moon 13 Sagittarius, Mercury 18 Sagittarius, Venus 27 Sagittarius. Tell me you're Sagittarius without telling me you're Sagittarius. Mars 18 Pisces, Jupiter 16 Virgo, Saturn 12 Cancer retrograde. Uranus 29 Aquarius, Uranus is at a critical degree. Neptune 10 Aquarius, Pluto 19 Sagittarius, Pluto 19 Taurus retrograde, Chiron 15 Capricorn, Ascendant 22 Aquarius, Ascendant at a critical degree, MC5 Sagittarius. Get that bag, girl. Look, <laughs> That's, uh, I, I, I'm a classy type of person. I'm a classy type of person. But I'm like, that's just that's just the thing to pop up on live, isn't it? Uh, I love that for you. I am screaming. Well, you know what? At least the option is there. So I thank the universe for sending the option. Although clearly I'm like, this must be scam. I don't know. All right, let's see here. Aquarius, part of your ascension is to really focus on friends, groups, networks, organizations, and the execution of your future endeavors. Watch out for chaotic tendencies here, okay? Because I will say here, when you feel like you're getting comfortable with yourself, when you feel like you're understanding yourself, getting to know yourself better, Uranus is trying to shake things up. Only reason is, is because this is really going to help you to execute your future endeavors in the future. Also paying attention to your ideas when, you feel, or when you're in the middle of that shakeup too, because that can actually help towards career status, I can see in life's work in a weird way. With Neptune here establishing a connection with the universe because you may not have the clearest insight on your life ahead so establishing that connection with the universe can actually help you and give you information to move towards executing your future endeavors this can also have an impact on career status legacy and life's work too as for chart ruler, you have two. You have your first um, chart ruler in your first house. So self-identity, independence, taking action towards your life's direction, as well as giving back to yourself through self-nourishment is also going to be an applicable theme here, as well as your day-to-day, -day, daily responsibilities, work schedule, routine around personal development and physical health. Just be sure not to overwork yourself and pay attention to your physical health here. If in the case that you're overworking yourself or you may be too busy, sickness, disease, or ailments can definitely come up about too, okay? Moving on, we have Mars and Pisces here. Now, it is op opposing Jupiter here, so a lot of people could definitely see your worth and value. It's up to you to see it within yourself. With Mars in your second house, there's a lot of energy and drive towards establishing your worth and value as well as getting money for income purposes. Now, giving back to yourself through filling back up your own cup, self-replenishment, there could be energy and drive towards this too. There may be a false illusion since Pisces has an influence on the second house, so just be sure that you are establishing a connection with the universe. This may give you the energy and drive needed to further establish that worth and value. If in the case that you feel like the universe is testing your patience ask yourself and enough is enough that helps you to further establish that too mercury and jupiter with that mutual reception as per what alara said too i you see it too you see it too let's see here we have mercury and sag jupiter virgo there you go go live now when your videos are trending i don't know why i got a notification of that when i was live anyway um uh, with mars in pisces there's energy and drive also towards your spiritual development and your spiritual journey right now too i will just say just don't rush through the spiritual awakening process or your own uh, dis uh establishing your own connection with the universe because this can actually cause psychological damage if not careful okay but also be sure that we're prioritizing your healing journey going below the surface accepting the darker aspects of life making peace with our past and also 
gaining the wisdom to share that with other people. That can also help you to figure out your worth and value too. Nothing in Aries. We have North Node and Taurus in that fourth house there. Faded events will definitely happen towards uh, your home and family, moving more towards pro uh, processing your feelings and your emotions. You're meant to have a blissful life. It's going to be very happy life for you too, especially with it being in Taurus. This is going to bring in some stability for you. But you also want to learn yourself at a foundational level. Who are you truly? What is it that you, who is it that you want to be for yourself? Okay. But with North Node and Taurus, this is also faded events helping you to further establish that worth and value for you too. All right. Moving on. We do have no, uh, nothing in Gemini. Saturn and Cancer already talked a little bit about that. But with Saturn and Cancer, there are some karmic lessons in regards to home and family processing your feelings and your emotions. Also listening to your intuition too. You may learn with this placement that it's only when you don't listen to your intuition where the issues and the conflicts and things start getting out of hand as well. All right. But with Saturn being in the sixth house too, as I said before, watch it for your physical health. Definitely watch for um, overworking yourself too, because that can lead to health issues too. Could death be friends with a lover story, uh, friends to lover story with seventh and fifth house ruler in the 11th house. Interesting, um, interesting that you say that too, um, because also you may yearn to be understood, um, just for yourself. You may yearn to understand yourself, but with, um, with Uranus, it doesn't throw an aspect to the seventh house because you don't have any seventh house placements, but naturally it's an opposition here. Um, being understanding in a relationship or having a friend first will definitely benefit you there too. Good eye, good eye uh, with Alara. Let's see here, moving on. There is nothing in Leo, Jupiter and Virgo. With Jupiter in the eighth house, um, I actually have this natally. This could bring in an inheritance. It usually brings in some knowledge from the occult or knowledge to help you to step into your power, to understand who you are and why you're here. You're an excellent student of life with this um, sextile here with Jupiter and Saturn. But just be sure here that you're taking your time when learning life lessons, especially when in regards to your healing journey, because that way you don't have to go through the lesson again. Okay. Jupiter in the eighth is very New Orleans. Yes, it is. I'll tell you that. How much are media readings today? Um, it's $15 cash up and no PayPal. Um, nothing in Libra. Also, by the way, watch for self-criticism, criticism of others, because Jupiter here is just going to um, expand on the worry unfortunately here. All right. It is $15 cash up and PayPal. I'll put up that information in just a second. Uh, nothing in Libra, nothing in Scorpio. We have Sun, MC, Moon, Mercury, Pluto, and Venus in Sagittarius. What a party in your 11th house here. You're naturally going to have other people helping you out to execute your future endeavors. This could be friends, groups, networks, and organizations. This can also help you to step into your power just as long as you don't over obsess over the future for you. Now with Mercury here, you're going to have a lot of ideas, so just be sure to write them down if in the case that they come to you. Um, also with Mercury in Sagittarius, you're meant to share your experience, share your story, whatever that may mean to you, um, based off of the things that you've gone through on your journey thus far. Just be sure to uh, have the confidence to do that since the sun has an influence here. But I will say with Mercury and Sagittarius, you are meant to share your wisdom with other people. Other people may look at you as if you're a teacher, somebody who has a lot of advice or experience. They may even look at you as if you are wise too. Now, I will say that you are meant to gain emotional fulfillment through executing your future endeavors, but it does have to have a resonation with your emotional well-being in order for it to resonate and give you that fulfillment, okay? So whatever you're executing, just be sure it resonates with your emotional well-being. Part of your mission is to point the collective in a spiritual direction anyway. So this requires you to share your story, which is right in alignment with Mercury and Sagittarius anyways. All right, moving on. We do have Chiron and Capricorn in that 12th house. There could be wounds around spirituality, trusting in the unknown, as well as hidden enemies that could have caused this. This could have been authority figures in your life, father figure. This could have just been bosses, people that had that power over you. It is really important to take back your power, take back your energy, setting up energetic boundaries. That way you're not taking on other people's energy as your own. Also establishing a personal connection with the universe if it doesn't already exist, deepening it if it does exist. That way you can start to heal yourself and heal other people. Your healing journey is going to go in tandem with your spiritual journey too. So the more that you prioritize your healing journey, the more that you're going to heal yourself and other people and the more that you're going to evolve in your spiritual journey as well. I will say also pay attention to career status, legacy, life's work, any goals that pertain to that as well. Catering towards those will also help you to heal yourself and to heal others as well. But that's all I'm seeing for you, Char, for the most part. Thank you. All right, let's see this. So we, um, oh, Lance, I don't know if you could still see it. But here is the information. It's going to be $15 today. Just send your donations to TRZOLLC, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. I think that you still have my Cash App. So, um, but it's TRZOLLC if in the case that you don't. Just be sure to include your birthday, time, and location. Like the example that you see below. Oops, excuse me. Like the example that you see below. And um, just be sure for international birthdays that you format it month, day, year, instead of day, month, year. Okay. Um... Thank you. I loved it. Of course, of course. 
I'm not seeing anybody else, but I feel I feel like I just got a ca another cash out before, but I'm like just trying to say. All right. So while we wait for that, there was something that somebody said before and I had my, it was on my mind. And now it's not on my mind. I must have lost the time on my mind. All right. No, not that. Okay, did that. I have a headache today for the second time. Saturn doesn't let me live. A headache? Oh, my God. I, like, is it a migraine headache? Um, also, ha have you been staring at your phone for so long? Is it me? I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to give you the headache. But for the second time today, the day is still early. It's so early today. All right. I think that's, well, right now the readings are still open, but let's see what, how the polls are going so far. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius is in a tie with Gemini, Leo, Aquarius, 3043, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, 1739, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, 2174. Ugh, we need more water risings in here. I said what I said. <laughs> no, I wasn't much on my phone today, and I don't know if it's a migraine, and it's 5 p.m. here. 5 p.m.? Oh, my God. Did it rain today? Uh, oh, now let me ask you a question. Do you find, oh, wow. Do you find that, like, the weather may make you feel different? Like, the weather can give you headaches? Like, for instance, if it's cloudy outside, you can start feeling a little, like, gloomy or different. Because, like, I, I kind of feel that, but I never, like, manifested, like, headaches or anything because of the weather. It's sunny and sun gives me headaches often. I, You and my roommate, maybe you are my roommate because my roommate's the exact same way. He doesn't like the heat. He doesn't like being in the sun too long. I'm like, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> Thank you for the roses, Raven. I don't know. I feel like I'm being like scammed, kerfuffled. Uh, kerfuffled? Kerfuffled? I don't know. What's, what, what's the word? Kerfuffled? Something, you know? Let me charge my phone. Maybe I should play that. I'll play for you guys while we wait. I'll play the charge my phone. Got to get home, get my fix. Saturn torturing us both, twins. Don't you just love it? Let's see here. I'm going to play my song for you guys while we... Ooh. Did this change? Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Let me charge my phone. I got to get home. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, we have a cash app, so I'll wait. I'll wait to say. I love your song, The Sense of Love. I liked recording that song. Um, and there's The Sense of Love. There was Russian Love, which um, there's a song I did, and I used, like, scenes from Pretty Woman. Uh, Pretty Woman, if you guys know the movie. If you guys don't know the movie, I'm concerned. But um, that song, Russian Love, The Sense of Love, um, give it to me walk show me how to walk the house remix not the original I like the original but the house remix those four songs are my favorite at the moment alongside charge my phone the one the song that I put out today all right we have D V whoop D V deals all right here we go I have to listen to the others Take your time. It's on Spotify, Apple Music. It's also on YouTube as well, if you guys have. I'm pretty sure that you guys have YouTube. Is D Veals here? D Veals. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oklahoma. That's it. That's the only thing I know from the musical. And 2.30 p.m. All right, let's see what's going on. Yeah, that's me. I'm over here. Uh, are you a Cancer Ascendant? Oh my God, yes, Cancer Ascendants. Yes, that's right. I wish you to become a star one day. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's coming. The day's coming. All right, here we go. Let's see what you got going on down here. Sun 14 Aquarius, Moon 27 Aries, Mercury 20 Aquarius, Venus 16 Capricorn, Mars 23 Taurus, Jupiter 17 Scorpio, Saturn 7 Leo, Uranus, Ret oh sorry, Saturn is retrograde by the way, Uranus 9 Pisces, Neptune 17 Aquarius, Pluto 25, Sagittarius, Neptune, uh, blah, 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 blah. North Node 7 Aries retrograde, Chiron 4 Aquarius, come on 444, four, four. that could be a confirmation number for you if you're into numerology, Ascendant 1 Cancer, Ascendant 
at a critical degree. MC 12 Pisces. Okay. Cancer Rising here. Hello. Yes, Cancer Rising fam. That's right. I feel like we don't get enough credit because a lot of people are trying to slander us Cancer Risings here, calling us too emotional, calling us too sensitive. They don't know what we've been through. We, we have emotional intelligence like no other. I said what I said. Am I biased? Maybe. All right. <laughs> Part of your ascension requires you to focus on your personal life, your home and family, as well as prioritizing your feelings and your emotions, feeling them through, listening to your intuition, as well as learning yourself at a foundational level. Who are you truly? Okay, chart ruler could be found in that 10th house of career status. I see life's work as well as hardships as well, too. So just be sure that we are prioritizing um, career, doing things in a way that is um, right the first time round because any impulse or spontaneous energies can cause delay. That can also cause stagnation too. We wouldn't want that. That will be. Now, since you have the North Node in Aries too, you're actually about, you're going through your nodal return currently, which means that faded events will definitely happen around your career during this time. Watch for impulsive energy, okay? Now, these opportunities may come suddenly, but definitely there's some lessons attached to it since your North Node is trying Saturn, okay? So just be sure that we are approaching that with ease and also creating some structure organization around the opportunities that do stick around okay <coughs> Moving on, we do have nothing, oh, sorry, we have Saturn and Leo. For starters, watch for spending frivolously, okay? Uh, frivolous spending, we do want to watch out with that. Uh, but for the most part with Saturn and Leo, you're definitely learning how to cultivate your um, confidence, really putting yourself out there, expressing your most authentic self too. This is also going to help you to establish your worth and value. You may feel tested from the universe from time to time. Ask yourself when enough is enough. This will help you to further establish your worth and value here. Now, other people see your worth and value. It's up to you to see it within yourself. You're also going to learn with this placement not to equate money with your worth and value also to find a balance between giving and receiving as well you also need to learn how to have fun in life instead of just working all the time that's right, I see you. But Saturn is teaching you how to set up your own foundation, how to set up your own uh, means of getting money for yourself. Just don't make it about money. But thank you for the gift, by the way. That's right. Let's see here. We have nothing in Virgo, nothing in Libra. Jupiter and Scorpio in that fifth house too. Very fortunate energy for you here. Jupiter does well in the fifth house. It's a natural significator of the fifth house here. Could indicate that um, if you do want children, that's a good possibility for you. Okay? But you are all about expressing your most authentic self. Light attributes and shadow attributes. This can go and um, cause a little conflict with your healing journey. But just be sure that you're establishing both your light and your shadow attributes, not just the light. Because Leo is all about expressing your authentic nature. But just from the light side, it's not all about like the dark energy too it's kind of just expressing yourself from the light and not you know but with jupiter and scorpio it takes both into consideration and it really puts it causes you to step into your power really uh but with jupiter and scorpio not many people can lie to you because you can't be fooled easily look at god um you've gone through a lot of transformation but now it's time to step in your confidence with that stand in your power become that power that is needed okay now you do have a t-square here in regards to your fifth your uh, 11th and your eighth house here so tapping into that worth and value learning your own personal worth and value will actually help you to alleviate any inner conflict and tension, which means filling back up your own cup, giving back to yourself, equating, um, establishing a balance between giving and receiving, okay? Moving on. We have Pluto and Sagittarius in that sixth house too. Now with Pluto in the sixth house, just be sure that you're not overworking yourself to your detriment. With Pluto in the sixth also, this means that your power could come from expressing both your light and your shadow attributes within your day to day. Finding a belief system, a meaning of life, a certain philosophy that goes in tandem with your life's purpose could also help you to step into your power and it can give you emotional fulfillment too since it's giving effortless energy towards Aries and Sagittarius too. Just be sure not to over obsess over your day to day, over obsessing about work and over obsessing over your life's purpose or certain beliefs that you may carry as well. Valens describes cancers as ambitious, popular, noble, and theatrical. I, I resonate with that. Oh, thank you for the roses, everybody. You guys are so kind today. Thank you, thank you. Let's see here. Now we have Venus and Capricorn in the seventh house here. Venus does well in the seventh house. Just watch for people pleasing, giving to other people towards your detriment, okay? But with Venus and Capricorn, you want somebody who's more mature, somebody who's established, somebody who, you, you know, there's longevity to that connection. Now I will say here, with Venus and Capricorn, you may have your fair share of karmic relationships, but really Capricorn in the seventh house is all about mastering relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection. For business, it's great, but for connections, may come with a little bit of delay. But for the most part, it is gonna work out for you. And that's on ancient Hellenistic description. I know that's right. You know, well, thank you for, I, I want to thank Hellenistic astrology for calling me popular and ambitious and theatrical because I am and noble as well. Thank you so much. But I would appreciate if you could change your name from cancer to maybe like something more 
less diseasey, you know what I mean? Anyway, moving on, we do have Chiron, the sun, Neptune, and Mercury in Aquarius in the eighth house there. With Mercury in the eighth house, another indicator that you people can't lie to you, okay? You naturally like to get to the bottom of things. Just be sure here that we're listening to our ideas. They're quite powerful, and they can definitely be utilized to make your dreams a tangible reality. There is a little bit of a square there, but it's going to help you to step into your power. You just need to step into your power enough to execute it. It's going to turn that square into something that you can use as a means of success, okay? But with Neptune here, there's a false illusion over your healing journey, so just be sure that we are prioritizing our healing journey in a more realistic sense, meaning going below the surface, accepting the darker aspects of life and making peace with our past, letting go of what no longer serves us, letting go of what no longer is in alignment, which in turn puts us in alignment with our dharmic path, the path that we're meant to be on, okay? Also, establishing a connection with the universe can also aid in your healing journey, too. I think it's top tier. Chiron in Aquarius, Chiron in the eighth house, wounds that really run deep with you, okay? These are wounds that can pertain to really feeling um, a sort of way after maybe a transformation. These could even be wounds around rejection, feeling misunderstood, trying to find a group that really gets you, but then feeling rejected from that group. Really understand why you are different. Understand why it is that you've been rejected. You haven't been rejected because people are mean. You've been rejected because you have the energy to really progress society forward here. You're different because you have the energy that can really make a difference in this life. You are what we need right now. We need you, okay? And you have the energy to really execute things in a way that has never been seen before that can really put you in a position of power. It's really up to you to see it within yourself, which leads me to what I said before. Everybody else can see your worth and value. It's just up to you to realize it within yourself. All right, moving on, we have Uranus conjunct that MC in Pisces here. Sudden changes that may shift you into your career status, legacy, and life's work. You definitely need to establish a connection with the universe here because you are being guided on your journey, especially with the ninth house, um, with your MC being in the ninth house and whole sign. Um, so this means that you are dealing something with a life purpose here. That means that you don't know what it is that you're destined to do. Perhaps you have a vision of what it is that you're meant to do, but the execution about it, you could do everything and still may not know what it is that you're going to do. It's going to happen for you. It's going to happen very suddenly. Okay. Okay, so there's not much that you need to do. Just establish that connection with the universe so you know where you are in your journey. Okay, with Jupiter and Scorpio, there's an effortless trine here. So this means that you are supported by the universe. You may even learn about your uh, own personal belief system, your own personal philosophy, your own personal meaning of life, whatever that may mean to you. Okay, we already went over Aries. Mars is in Taurus in the 11th house. You may find yourself in leadership positions. Just be sure to watch out for rushing to execute your future endeavors here. Okay, friends, groups, networks, and organizations will definitely help you. And this will actually add to the motivation to execute any future endeavors just take your time just take the time there because mars will tend to uh get impulsive and spontaneous so just watch for that all right but that's pretty much all i'm seeing for you char for the most part thank you Hellenistic astrology is giving. I love it. That's right. I want a reading, babe. Tell me what to do so I can get one, please. All right. So all you have to do is send 15 doll hairs to T-R-Z-O-L-L-C, cash up MO, PayPal, the name is synonymous, through all three platforms. Just be sure to include your birthday, time, and location like the example that you see right there. For international birthdays, just be sure to format that month, day, year. I just realized that it's like way over right here. All right. Just be sure to format that month, day, year instead of day, month, year because we're not in Europe as much as we want to be. All right. And for Instagram, just send it to uh, Trezzo, T-R-E-S-C-Z-L. I literally just put it here and it's like, all right, let's see who's next. All right. I think Valens hated Scorpios, describing them as murderers, traitors, or thieves. So I have a bone to pick with Valens then because not you calling me ambitious, noble, theatrical, and popular, but now you're calling me a murderer, a traitor, and a thief. I'm not a thief. The only thing I stole was my dignity and I stole that back because I needed that. Okay, traitor to who? My shadow self? No, I don't think so. The only thing I'm a traitor to is this opinion. Also, murderers, I have not murdered one soul, maybe of flies. Okay, maybe because like flies and ants, I just can't do the flies and ants. Okay, I came by that honestly. That doesn't make me a murderer, per se. People have done it too. I'm not mad, you're mad. <laughs> Capricorn woman and Aquarius man, both ruled by Saturn, sending thoughts and prayers. Uh, I'm just kidding. Let me stop. Um, I will say Capricorn and Aquarius, they are both ruled by Saturn traditionally, but um, Aquarius is more unconventional and will kind of get sick and tired of what Capricorn is doing. Or if they actually do get along great, um, Aquarius will definitely have the means to sustain whatever Capricorn is building up. But I'm a Capricorn Mars and I don't tolerate it. That's right. You shouldn't. It's a Scorp because Scorpio is a Mars sign and Mars is supposed to be bad. But I'm, well, fair. <laughs> you got me there. 
All right. What? Nancy, um, <laughs> is Nancy here? Thank you so much. This, wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, is Nancy here? Nancy is here. Thank you, thank you. And I also have Kendra too. Okay, Scorpios offer real the nicest people I met. Thank you. I, that's all I've been saying. You know, like I feel like Scorpios, they're, they're a treat, especially October Scorpios. November Scorpios, stay tuned. More at 11. You know, these are so good. I can't wait for mine. Ooh, I'm excited. Saturn is, <clears throat> Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Mars. The Malefics love Capricorn. I forget you guys, you Hellenistics, you take the um, the exalted sign and you guys also rule it by that too, which is also a good perspective to look at it by. Mars is a war god, but it also fights for justice. It has good and bad manifestations like anything. And it's sitting in my sixth house. You know what? I will say this. Mars in my sixth house does great because I don't really get sick as much, but child, child I do get impulsive in my day to day because I'm like, look, you know, if I get bored... I'm t I said what I said. T, we don't F with the November Scorpios. I'm screaming, okay? Well, here's the thing. Because the more you get into Scorpio energy, people think, oh, it's like, oh, you know. But no, it's the deacons. You're now mixing energies with Scorpio. The first 10 degrees of Scorpio, I think is great. Because, yeah, we're transformative. We could be a little intense. But I think it's for good purpose. We just want to allow our, our um, we want to associate ourselves with people that are healing. That way we don't fall back into traps as well, too. But um, the later you get into Scorpio, you get like, especially like the second from, I would say, 10 degrees to 19 degrees, you're getting Scorpio from a Piscean lens. No, you know, Cancer and Scorpio, I feel like they go better than Pisces and Scorpio, but like, it's that middle you gotta watch out for. That's really giving the murderers, the traitors. <laughs> but like, cause I'm like, that. those first 10 degrees of Scorpio, I don't know if we can claim that. <laughs> I have Chiron and Scorpio myself too. All right, let's see here. I have Kendra, I got hers first, and then I'm gonna get to Nancy. All right. Kendra's up first, Little Rock, Arkansas. I don't have a name for Little Rock. I don't do Pisces. Well, I don't have a problem with Pisces, actually. You know, I've met some nice Pisces in my life. Um, a lot going on in the subconscious, but um, work. <laughs> and then we have Ida, too. I am Ida. I just paid on Cash App. Yep, I just got yours. You're all good, good. All right, so we have Kendra, Nancy, and then we have Ida as well. Um, and then we have Ju Scorpio and Jupiter and Scorpio. I love Jupiter and Scorpio energy, not just because I have Jupiter in the eighth, but Jupiter and Scorpio I like because they naturally transform you for the better. It's not like Saturn and Scorpio where it's like they transform you and you're like you're still stuck on what happened. All right, Kendra, we're starting with you, Kendra. I have a lot of energy today, by the way. Kendra was born on a day at a time in a place. Was she born by the river? In a little tent. We will never know. Christmas Eve. Now, let me ask you a question, Kendra. Uh, for Christmas, do you get two, twi like twice the presents because your birthday is the day before? Or do you just like your Christmas presents are your birthday presents? And if that's the case, I say that you get new people getting your presents. I said what I said, look. All right, Kendra, let's get to it. Is Kendra here? Kendra here? Absolutely, double gifts only. That's right, that's right. All right, Kendra is here. We're gonna take a look to see if you have any critical degrees. Sun, two, Capricorn, moon, 24, Cancer, Mercury, 19, Sagittarius. Venus, 21, Scorpio. Venus is at a critical degree. Mars, 21, Aquarius. Mars is at a critical, well, a, a critical degree. Your Mars and Venus are squared. That's why I paused real quick. Jupiter, 25, Aries. Saturn, 10, Taurus, retrograde. Uranus, 14, Aquarius. Neptune, 2, Aquarius. Pluto, 11, Sagittarius. North, node 5, Leo, retrograde. Chiron, 10, Sagittarius. Ascendant, 12, Libra. MC, 13, Cancer. Your MC, your Midhaven's at a critical degree. All right, all right, let's see here. I'm telling you, everybody has Pluto in the third house. 
All right. Part of your ascension requires you to focus on relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection, business, business, contract, marriage, and union sold separately. Results may vary. Okay. You are definitely a star here. Shine bright, shine far. Don't be shy. Be a star. Y'all see that star too, right? Okay. Now your chart ruler can be found in that second house of worth, value, material, possession, as well as giving back to yourself through self-replenishment. Immediate family definitely may have an, impulse, um, an influence on here as well too. But I will say with Venus and Scorpio, just be sure not to over-obsess with money here, over-obsessing over our worth and value. Now, career can definitely be a great place for you to earn money from, but just be sure that we're not over-obsessing here. Watch for impulsive spending since Mars has an influence here traditionally too, but for the most part, just watch for self-splurging or over, um, over, what's the word? Over indulgence, overly giving to yourself as well here too. But it's a very powerful position. In terms of a relationship, you want a deeper connection. You want somebody who can be more intimate and vulnerable, somebody who you share that connection with, regardless of how transformative that the relationship could be, okay? Moving on, we do have the party in Sagittarius. And don't over obsess with lovers either. Oh, absolutely. Especially with Venus and Scorpio, because that'll be the end right there. <coughs> With Chiron, Pluto, uh, Mercury, and that's pretty much it in Sagittarius. You're definitely meant to share your experience. You're meant to speak up, share your story, perhaps, um, with Mercury and Sagittarius. Any information that you're sharing with people, you naturally don't know how to back that up with your own personal experience, as well as your beliefs, your philosophies as well, perhaps maybe towards your life's purpose too. Pay attention to the ideas that you have. They could definitely be utilized towards executing any future endeavors that you may have, okay? Now, with Pluto here, you have to... You have to know your audience or perhaps you yeah, know actually yeah you do need to know your audience but your audience has to be ready for the information that you're sharing with them because with this placement they they have to be on a healing journey you tend to speak the truth you tend to just say it you know share your opinion regardless it's a very authentic experience but you serve as the catalyst that can either help the other person to heal or to project and out of 10 times they may project don't take on that projection i can tell that you probably took it on before or early in life that caused you to um have some chironic wounds just be sure to stand clear in your life's purpose, stand clear in your belief system as well as your philosophy, and really um, find an outlet to get those words and your opinions out there, perhaps even your ideas too. Maybe this could be journaling. This can also be speaking to the universe, writing a letter that has never been delivered. Whatever works for you, um, once you do those things, that's actually going to help you to heal yourself, heal other people, and it's going to help you to step into your power too. I think it's a good time. Sun and Capricorn in the fourth house, major focus is on prioritizing your feelings and your emotions, really uh, that nurturing energy, bringing that out as well, learning yourself at a foundational level here too. With Sun and Capricorn, career status, legacy, and life's work can also be at the forefront, but just be sure that we are finding the balance between your personal life and your public life as well too. Um, this could indicate to me that you had to grow up, or grow up early in life too, but I will say that there is some... Um, there is some energy that is pointing towards your healing journey. Just be sure that we're prioritizing our healing journey from whatever has gone on here. This could be a major lesson, or perhaps maybe this is something that you're holding off on. But once you prioritize your healing journey, that's what's going to help you to step into your power. And it could actually cause progression in your healing. I'm sorry, in your career, status, legacy, and life's work as well, too. But I will say here, um, moving to the Saturn real quickly, you need to confront any fears in regards to intimacy, vulnerability, going below the surface and prioritizing that healing journey there. Be sure to not micromanage anything that is outside of your control. Now, Saturn in the eighth house can usually bring a long life, may not be the healthiest, so just watch out for that too. But it usually gives longevity in the area of your life here too. So you're going to be here for a while. Now, an inheritance can definitely come in for you as well here with Saturn and Taurus. It just may be delayed, all right? Moving on, we do have uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Mars in that fifth house here. Mars in the fifth house gives energy and drive towards building up your confidence, putting yourself out there, and expressing your most authentic self. You may have a different way of going about that since it's in Aquarius. And with Uranus here, just be sure to pay attention to anything um, that comes about when you are expressing yourself, putting yourself out there and building up your confidence. This can actually help you to learn more about yourself on a um, individual level. Okay. But I will say here with Neptune here, just be sure that we are facing fun or building up our confidence in a more realistic sense since Neptune can put that false illusion there. But for the most part, the confidence is going to be needed to execute any future endeavors that you may want to um, manifest for yourself. It's actually part of your faded events that will come in. So I feel like it will naturally um, happen for you. But with the North Node in the 11th, house friends groups networks and organizations are also going to be at the forefront confidence is going to be needed to really be around them as well as execute your future endeavors too also building up enough confidence to have fun and not just make everything about work that's also going to be faded events that help you out too all right now um, neptune here when you build up confidence is also going to give you emotional fulfillment look at god all right 
Let's see here. Uh, moving on, we have nothing in Pisces. Jupiter and Aries in the seventh house. An influx of people definitely may learn um, to expand in your belief system, in your on your life's purpose as well too, just from being around other people too. Just be sure that you're not putting other people before yourself, that you're um, incorporating a sense of independence within the connection as well too. This will actually help you to um, establish balance within the dynamic, okay? Now, there could be a little bit of conflict and intention within uh, career, not career, but yeah, career status, legacy, life's work, and as well as relationships, partnerships, interpersonal connection. Just be sure here that um, any relationships that you're entering, not only are they helping you to expand on your higher knowledge or higher education, but they're also fulfilling you emotionally. If they don't, that's usually an indicator that they may not be for you, okay? Um, but once you figure out that the person is for you through your emotional well-being, that's actually going to turn that square into a means that you can use for um, achievement and success. All right. And that's pretty much all I'm seeing for you, Char, for the most part. You do have a couple of yachts here. So focusing on your career, status, legacy, life's work, also focusing on making other people happy or perhaps doing the thing that you would like to do um, that caters to your emotional well-being. Okay. Also focus on your healing journey, major lessons to be learned there. All right. Special purpose could definitely be activated. Pay attention to any Scorpio transits as well as Capricorn transits too, because it's going to activate the odds in your chart. All right. But that's all I'm seeing for you, Char, for the most part. Thank you, Kendra. All right, let's see who's next. We have Nancy's next. Nancy, is Nancy here? Of course, anytime, anytime. All right, let me just see what I missed. Uh, let's see. We're doomed to separate with lovers anyway, T. Scorpio Venus love is so deep that... It would be a it would be a lit, a bit much for me. Um, I like well, I have Venus and Scorpio in my sidereal chart, and, but it's in the sixth house, and I'm like I don't recommend that placement because look, it's picky. I said what I said, um, but yes, it's definitely a deep love, a deep connection that you would want with somebody. Be careful not to sacrifice everything for relationships. Most of the time, it's not worth it. Oh, T, what a lesson. What what some that those are some words. All right, Nancy is here. And Los Angeles, California girls are unforgettable, fine, fresh, fierce, we got it unlocked. West Coast represent, we're undeniable. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Tell your friends. I'm here. Talk to your... And all right, here we go. A lesson I've learned. Oh, me too comes from the person comes from a person who has never had a relationship uh, but her chart showed a pattern which could lead to that um now i ha i really feel like i haven't had a relationship in my adult life that i've like you know that's been venus and scorpio worthy like i've had these flings but that's more like fifth house you know what i mean like it hasn't been like the oh wow like i'm really feeling something here it's just been like the okay this person's here it's giving you know is this person eating no they didn't eat i did they just picked at it you know what i mean all right cancer ascendant back to we love the cancer ascendant the moon's at a critical degree mercury 26 pisces venus 15 pisces mars 2 aries jupiter 29 cancer jupiter's at a critical degree saturn 7 virgo retrograde uranus 20 scorpio retrograde neptune 20 sagittarius retrograde pluto 17 libra retrograde north node 15 virgo retrograde Chiron 8 Taurus. Chiron's at a critical degree. 8888 may be um, a number that you see just for confirmation if you're into numerology. Ascendant 9 Cancer, MC 23 Pisces. All right, let's see what we got up here, Cancer Ascendant. Part of your ascension requires you to focus on as really getting comfortable with um, expressing that more nurturing side of you, really prioritizing your personal life, home and family, prioritizing your feelings and your emotions, feeling them through listening to your intuition, as well as learning yourself at a foundational level. Who are you truly? Who are you at your core, okay? Your chart ruler could be found three places from itself in Virgo, in your third house there. Be sure not to over-intellectualize your emotions, but rather feel them through. Also, be sure to talk out your feelings. Talk about how you're feeling with people that are closest to you. It may be hard for you, especially early on, but it does get better over time. Okay. Also be sure not to over worry because I know your mind moves like a million miles per minute. Okay. But don't over worry yourself. Watch for self criticism, criticism of others as well. Okay. Faded events to happen in that third house. There could be the jack of all trades, master of none, but you'll even do it better than the master of one. Now it is really important to watch out for spreading misinformation or gossiping about people because it, it could be quite karmic for you if not careful. Okay. 
but for the most part here, um, structure, organization, as well as consistency will be needed to execute any ideas, okay? And to make them a tangible reality. Patience is going to be required, okay? Moving on, just be sure any information that you're sharing with other people, rather it be to help them out or information that you just learned, that you're sharing it with personal experience, backing it up with that experience that you have encountered as well, that will help to establish the balance between this axis, all right? Moving on, we do have Jupiter and Cancer in that first house there. So Jupiter is giving you a lot of experiences, it is making you wise, and is bringing some wisdom to your personality. Now, this can also be utilized within career status, like seen life's work, and also within your own belief system, trying to figure out your life's purpose or aligning yourself to people that are um, sharing that same life purpose with you as well, or perhaps belief system too. Moving on, there's nothing in Leo, just watch for frivolous spending. Pluto in the fourth house can definitely mean that you're a generational curse breaker, definitely had a transformative upbringing, intense situations that have happened within the early childhood. This is now actually preparing you for career status, legacy, and life's work, but it is really important to prioritize that healing journey as well as prioritize your emotional well-being without over-obsessing over it. That way you could step into your power, okay? It is going to be also really important that we're facing our emotional well-being and our healing journey from a realistic standpoint because Neptune's influence can definitely put a false illusion in, um, over that, okay? But it is important to know that you are breaking some generational curses. It may be hard. It's not going to be easy. But once you're on the other side, you'll know that everything that you went through was actually worth it. And everything that you went through was actually leading you down uh, that path to prepare you for your career status, legacy, and life's work. Definitely. Wow. I'm breaking curses that have been passed down. I know that's right. I use 888 to attract more wealth. I do too. I've been seeing a lot of 888s recently too. Let's see here. We do have Uranus and Scorpio. Definitely a, a different way to establish your um, confidence to put yourself out there to really become the most authentic version of yourself and to express that out too. Now, you may do this on a deeper level. You definitely may have some power with this too. Paying attention to any ideas that may come about too that can actually help you within your career sector as well as help you to better understand your life's purpose and your beliefs as well too. Uh, just as long as you don't over obsess with it, of course. Okay, moving on. We do have Neptune and Sagittarius here. False illusions may be put on your day-to-day, -day, daily responsibilities, as well as work schedule routine around personal development and physical health. Just be sure here that we're establishing a connection with the universe, implementing anything from our spiritual journey within our day-to-day. -day. This will definitely have an um, influence within our career, as well as our life's purpose, moving towards that with our beliefs and our philosophies as well. With Neptune and Sagittarius, it is also important to face our day-to-day -day with a realistic standpoint as well. Also be sure to get um, or to figure out new or let's say this, uh, make sure that we are getting in alignment with our life's purpose and doing things within our day to day that align us with that, if that makes sense. Okay. Cause also Pisces, the ruler, one of the rulers of Pisces is Neptune sitting in the sixth house. So implementing anything that caters to our life's purpose, anything that we believe within our day to day will turn this square into something that you can use as a means of success and achievement. Obsession is my middle name. I'm screaming. It's giving Scorpio weight. <laughs> Let's see here. We have nothing in Capricorn, nothing in Aquarius. Venus and Pisces alongside MC and Mercury. Definitely meant to share your story, share your experience. So this is actually great for your third house here because this means that this is going to um, move you towards emotional fulfillment, okay? But I will say with Pisces MC, establishing that connection with the universe is actually going to move you towards whatever it is that you're destined for because you're being guided in your career status, like I see in life's work, okay? There's definitely a life purpose, something that you're meant to do that will be revealed in time. But if, as far as looking at uh, philosophies resonating with any beliefs, other people will definitely help you out in that um, in that arena. So just be sure to keep yourself open to receiving maybe new perspectives or just receiving just some new knowledge, okay? Moving on, we do have Sun and Mars in that 10th house in Aries there. Major focus is going to be on career status, legacy, life's work. You do have a lot of energy and drive towards these themes. Just watch out for impulsive energy as well as spontaneous influence as well too, okay? Mars and Aries, um, definitely a lot of energy to get things done within the career, but may cause some delay or obstacles if not careful, okay? Last but not least, before I let you go, we have Chiron and Taurus, wounds that could have affected your worth and value. This could have uh, been around feeling rejected, misunderstood, not understanding why you may be seen as different. You're different because you have the energy to really progress society forward to make the world a better place. So we actually need your energy and need your ideas. So you do have a lot of ideas that can really push society forward and can really put you in a position of power or in a position of authority, I should say. But what can help you to heal is really understanding yourself, not denying yourself, not rejecting yourself, but also seeing your own worth and value, not just doing, but also being at the same time. That's actually what helps you to heal yourself and to heal other people. And it can teach you something more about yourself too. But that's pretty much all I'm seeing for your chart for the most part, Nancy. Thank you.
the way me and this person both have Aries, Sun, and Pisces, Venus. We love a Pisces, Venus is exalted, but sometimes, I'm not going to lie, I'd rather have a Venus uh, a Venus in Virgo rather than a Venus in Pisces, because Venus in Virgo, they know what they're doing. They're just very picky. I said what I said. Of course, anytime, anytime. All right, we have Ida next. Ida is next. And then I may go. So readings are closed then. Let's see. Readings are closed and I'll be back on Wednesday. But readings are not closed just yet. My boyfriend is Venus and Virgo. I'm screaming. All right. Readings are closed, everybody. I have Ida to do and then we're going to chat after. And then we are going to regroup on Wednesday. Lacrosse, Wisconsin. Now, was lacrosse the sport made in Wisconsin? We'll never know. Is that how I spell it? Let's see here. Am I spelling it wrong? There we go. All right, let's see. He. I've been seeing 717 all over the place. Must be a synchronicity. 911, what's your emergency? All right, let's see what's going on here. Can you guys still hear me? Just making sure. Is Ida here, by the way? Is Ida here? <clears throat> All right, well, while we wait for this to load, how's everyone doing? Let's check out on the polls real quick. All right, we have Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, 3158, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, 2105, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, 2895, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Not us losing. Maybe it's because I said something. All right, Ida is here. Great, great, great. We're just going to zoom up on this. Come on, Virgo Ascendant. And we're going to go see down here what's good. All right, we have Sun, 24, Cancer, Moon, 8, Taurus. Moon is at a critical degree. Mercury, 14, Leo. Venus, 13, Cancer. Venus is at a critical degree. Mars, 15, Gemini. Jupiter, 14, Leo. Saturn, 10, Virgo. Uranus, 16, Scorpio, retrograde. Neptune, 18, Sagittarius, retrograde. Pluto, 16, Libra. North Node, 10, Virgo, retrograde. Chiron, 13, Taurus. Ascendant, 4, Virgo. Ascendant's at a critical degree. MC, 28, Taurus. All right. OMG, Jupiter and Leo. Oh, we, we have a Jupiter and Leo lover. See, if I had Jupiter and Leo in my second house, you know, I would I would hit up that daddy and say, hey, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Um, Virgo, part of your ascension is really to focus on your daily responsibilities, your daily operations, work schedule, routine, or on personal development and physical health. Faded events will push you towards your self-identity, independence, taking action towards your life's direction, as well as giving back to yourself through self-nourishment as well. Whatever action that you're taking towards uh, your life's direction, just be sure that there is consistency, structure, and organization behind it as well, okay? Now, this will definitely help move you towards your life's purpose. It'll also give you emotional fulfillment as well, okay? It may even help you to find a certain belief system or philosophy that'll resonate with you too, okay? Chart ruler could be found 12 places from itself in that 12th house. There are a lot of unconscious qualities that may uh, present itself through your dreams and visions, so pay attention to that. Also pay attention to your subconscious. This can actually help you to figure out your life's purpose as well. There is a square in, be in between your 9th and your 12th house, so just be sure that your beliefs are in alignment with your own individual journey with the universe too. Now, there is a T-square here in regards to your ninth, your 12th, and your 3rd house here. So, implementing your spiritual journey within your day-to-day, -day, tapping into your daily responsibilities, work schedule, routine around personal development, and physical health will also help you to alleviate any, any inner conflict and tension that you may be having too. All right. With Jupiter being in your 12th house here, Jupiter's at home in the 12th house, so it does really great. And um, traveling to foreign lands can also help you to establish your spiritual development. It can help you to um, establish spiritual liberation as well too. But watch out for the overconfidence, the overego, because that can actually uh, cause some damage to the spiritual house, if not careful, okay? But for the most part, it's a really good house. Watch for overconfidence. That can also come through like a karmic, um, a karmic relationship, a karmic dealing, if not careful too. All right, moving on, we have Pluto in the second house. Very powerful earner here. Just be sure not to over-obsess over money or over-obsessing on equating money to your worth and value, okay? With Pluto in the second house, you are very powerful when you establish your worth and value or when you see your value and worth for yourself instead of other people seeing it for you, okay? It is going to be really important that you establish some sort of business that will help you to not only step in your power, but also to uh, really get some income for yourself. But income could also come from career, status, legacy, life's work. Just don't rush through those dealings because that can have an influence and cause some transfer 
transformation within the career and your finances as well, okay? Moving on, we do have Uranus and Scorpio in the third house. Very progressive thoughts, very progressive communicator as well. Perhaps the things that you talk about, they could be deep. People do have to be ready for it, but it's not so much Plutonian, but rather people won't be able to resonate with it in the present moment. Uh, the things that you say, the things that come to pass may not come to pass until like days, weeks, months, even years later, okay? Because Uranus is innovative. It's in the future. So you're definitely ahead of the game in terms of communication and ideas and thoughts, but they may not take um, heat until about later. But I will say pay attention to those ideas because they can be executed towards your future endeavors. And other people will definitely help you out here too, but it's part of your becoming, part of your life's focus as well. Anything that you're executing towards your future endeavors needs to resonate with you on on it needs to resonate with your emotional well-being if it doesn't then it may not have the impact that you may want it to have okay but any um any information that you're sharing with other people just back that up with your personal experience not only will that give you emotional fulfillment but it'll establish balance between the axis okay neptune in the fourth i'm not gonna lie here for starters do not run away from your emotions but rather feel them through okay but neptune in the fourth this really gives that you grew up and you thought that life was normal and everything was great but then a certain situation happened and it snapped you into reality 11-11 is on my clock as we speak as well. Um, this With this placement, um, it does cause you to question after a while, like what is life? It really causes you to question who you are at a foundational level as well. It is going to be, in, it's important to know that this happened because it's preparing you for your career status like it's in life's work, okay? But do not look at your emotional well-being from a false illusion. You need to deal with those emotions and face them head on too, okay? Moving on. Um, Naleli. I, my readings are closed for today, but I'll be back on Wednesday, okay? But um, I'll explain in just a second how you can get a reading. Nothing in Capricorn, nothing in Aquarius, nothing in Pisces, nothing in Aries. Moon in Taurus. Emotionally stable. Emotional fulfillment could be found through finding a belief system, a philosophy, as well as your own meaning of life, taking action towards your life's purpose as well. There um, are wounds around belief systems early on that could have affected your worth and value. Like early on, you could have grew up with a belief system, a philosophy, a religion that you didn't quite like. It didn't quite resonate with you. So finding your own belief system and expanding on on that will definitely help you to heal yourself and to heal other people. It'll also contribute to your emotional well-being. Now, with Taurus in the ninth house, just be sure that your beliefs are not too dogmatic, that you're keeping an open mind towards other perspectives, okay? Now, part of your MC here, whatever you're building for yourself will be around for a long time. It's just going to require patience on your part, okay? MC ruler will be in that 11th house here. So ninth and the 11th, third place, three places from itself. So self-effort will be required, but this will um, require you to execute some future endeavor, Okay. Uh, happy Fall Equinox, by the way, you guys. By the way, happy Fall Equinox to you, Laura, too. Let's see here. Mars and Gemini here. Watch for arguments, debating energy. There is a lot of energy and drive towards career status. I can see in life's work, but when it's in Gemini, there can be arguments or debates around certain opinions, so just watch out for that as well. But for the most part, just watch out also for spontaneous and impulsive actions um, towards your career dealings, because this can cause stagnation and delay, so we wouldn't want that, would we? Okay. We do have Venus and Cancer, Sun and Cancer as well. Part of your you're becoming is towards friends, groups, networks, and organizations, um, and the execution of your future endeavors. Other people will definitely help you out here, but as I said before, just be sure that whatever you're executing towards your future endeavors is resonating with you on an emotional level. Otherwise, it may not have the impact that you're wanting, okay? Also, be sure to prioritize your healing, uh, your emotional well-being, as well as feeling your feelings and your thoughts, uh, your feelings and your emotions through. Um, also, really implementing some nourishing, um, nourishing energy into uh, your friend groups, nurturers, uh, friends groups, Wow, friends, groups, uh, large events, as well as networking too. Just bring some nurturing energy into that. But friends, groups, um, establishing that and to help that. Wow, I don't even know where I'm going with that. But for the most part, <laughs> I will say just be sure to focus and bring the in, the emotion and the nourishment within that friend group. That will make it last a whole lot much more. And it can actually give you resources to execute your future endeavors. But I just had a mind blow there. Anyway, last but not least, before I let you go, you have Mercury and you have Jupiter in the sign of Leo. As I said before, why? Watch out for overly confidence or over ego because that can bring damage to your 12th house. With Mercury here, just pay attention to your subconscious. Also pay attention to your dreams because you do have a chatty subconscious here. But this um, being vocal or speaking out about your spiritual journey as well can actually help you to develop your confidence too. Now, I want to make note because your 12th house ruler is 12 places from itself. So unconscious qualities definitely may be on a higher expression here. So it's really important that you're aware of the unconscious qualities by spending 
spending time with yourself. You will have a lot of opportunity to spend time by yourself to really get or make yourself known of your own energy to develop that connection with the universe too. But it's going to have a major importance here is because if you're not conscious about those qualities that you're unconscious about, um, they may cause some stagnation to make your dreams a tangible reality. Other people may pick up on that. And this could affect the support with other people helping you out there too. So I would just say be become more aware of those unconscious qualities by spending time by yourself and really prioritizing your spiritual journey too and doing things out of the pureness okay because the 12th house is all about the house of purity okay so um anything that you're executing for the future make sure that there's pureness in that that you're bringing your pure energy within that too okay but that's all i'm seeing for you chart for the most part sorry for the mouth jumbleness uh, but it is mercury shadows period and i'm ready for it to be over but that's pretty much all i'm seeing for you chart for the most part thank you all right, I think that's it for today. All right, everyone, that is it for today. I'm going to review uh, what you should do if in the case that you're interested in a private reading. So first, if you're interested in a private reading, just go to the link in my bio under Universal Analysis. I do offer astrology, numerology, and tarot. I love the live today, too. It was so much better than last week. Oh. But um, I do offer astrology, numerology, and tarot. So if in the case that you're interested, I spend an hour looking at your chart, going over the aspects, everything. We laugh, we cry, we say all the A words. It's a good time. You know, so that's the universal analysis link is in my bio. If you're new to astrology and you want to learn more about astrology basics or even how to read your own chart, the Beginner's Guide to Life Astrology Edition. It's a book that I published. It's in the, um, the link in my bio under Trevor Sebastian Publishing. It teaches you all you need to know about astrology, okay? And it makes it easy for you to understand too. So if you're interested in that book, it's called the Beginner's Guide to Life Astrology Edition. It's in the link in my bio under Travis Fashion Publishing, all right? But until next time, I fare thee well, everybody. Have a great Monday, and I'll see you Wednesday. Goodbye!